Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Live with Naz. An hour of laughter and encouragement coming to you from Corona, California. Tonight is episode number 357. 357, yes. Yes, let's see who is joining us from the other side, people. Let's invite our other side people. Come on in. Let's see. What do we got? Here we go. Let's share it. Is that it? Yes. Oh, people from the other side are already in. This is nice. All right, let's see. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. Well, hey, guys. Hey, listen. Okay. Wow. Somebody from the other side trying to lost his duct tape on his mouth and starting to talk. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Becky Voss. How are you? Catherine Allen, how you doing? Becky Ottenberry. I'm going to read you what you guys have, what Facebook puts your name there. Sarah is a milestone follower. Uh, Becky Voss is an uh, one anniversary follower. Catherine Allen, milestone follower. Becky Ottenberry is one anniversary follower. And let's see who else. Catherine Allen is my Sarah. Becky, three plus five equals seven, almost. David is top fan plus one. Dave Ebert, three, 57. Three. <laughs> All right, let's see. Debbie Malone, it doesn't say anything. How are you? Welcome. Sarah, hello. Other side people. Yes, Bobby Ebert is a follower, not a follower in real life. She's a follower on Facebook for me. <laughs> you're not a follower. You're a star. Troy is here. Hello, Troy. Welcome back, my brother. It's good to see you again from Danville, Illinois. Bobby, Bobby Miller. Hello, all inviting my other half. Dave Ebert. Uh, so I'm confused. Who all is this mysterious other side? Can't tell you. Can't tell you. All right, let's see who else. Rita. Rita is considered a sharer. Hello, Rita. And uh, let's see. Laura Collins. How are you, Laura? Thank you for joining us early. What's up with Facebook giving us all these weird <laughs> titles? Yeah, they are weird names. Okay, let's see. <laughs> I've been wondering, but Nez refuses. I refuse. I profusely refuse. Uh, Paul Garland, hello, top fan plus one. And uh, let's see, all right. It's good to see you guys. It is Wednesday. What did I do today? I went to a friend's uh, sister funeral. One of my friend's neighbors, his sister passed away from cancer. Actually, her husband, if you've been with us for a while, he used to join us on the, on uh, Live with Naz. The guy that was writing in Arabic, and he asked you to pray for his wife with cancer. They gave her one year. She lived five years, and she passed away this last week. And we, we went to the funeral today, and then me and Mahan Tali picked her from school. We had some falafel sandwiches, really good ones in Corona, and then came home, started working, walked the dog, did all that worked out and started working on the show ray elfers top fan plus one hello facebook everybody as winner <laughs> okay last night you i asked you the question give me the most embarrassing reasons you might find yourself at the er most embarrassing reason you might find yourself at the er of course the number one will not be in this list trust me it was we should have never asked why <laughs> Should have never asked why. Number 20, you stapled your fingers together. Number 19, accidentally macing yourself. Number 18, you got beat up by your little sister. Number 17, you were peacefully protesting. <laughs> Number 16, bathe the cat. If you bathe the cat, that's enough to send you to the ER. Number 15, anxiety attack over mother-in-law's visit. <laughs> Number 14, Playing with a taser, facing yourself. 
Number 13, waxing back without trimming hair first. Number 12, pencil stuck in nose. Number 11, overdose on x lax Number 10, you got your foot stuck in your mouth. Number 9, swallowed squeaker from squeaky toy. Number 8, you rolled your eyes at your mom and they got stuck. Number 7, you got stuck in Spanx. Number 6, super glued your finger to nose. Number 5, you sneezed and your glass eye popped out. <laughs> Number four, migraine from a loud, constant beeping sound from your ankle monitor. Number three, you yawned so wide that the jaw locked open. Number two, I was playing twister and one, can't untwist myself. And the number one, worst reason to be, <laughs> to go to, embarrassing reason to go to the ER. You got run over by an Amish buggy. <laughs> All right, Mr. Matthew Dirks, you got the number one tonight. Welcome, Art of the Art. Nez looks like he needs a hug. I do. Why does it look? I do. Hi, Sarah Books and everyone who has a kidney. Thank you, Art, for caring about our organs. My nephrologist really said hello. <laughs> uh, you super glued your mouth shut, right? <laughs> Yeah, that number one that's not on here was truly embarrassing, and I really do feel bad for her. I know. And we insisted to know. That's the problem. A hug by a straight jacket. Thank you, Art. Mm. I need a hug, and instead of hug, I get, I get slammed. I got accused of being abnormal, which I am. It's fine. I love, wow, that took a dark turn there, Art. I know. <laughs> Hugs to you now. Thank you, Laura. Dave, I think he needs a random prayer for an unconfirmed Ill illness for the cost of some merch. What? He needs a random prayer. Oh, 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 oh. The cost of some, I get it. The guy took, took, took my cross, prayed for a, an illness I didn't have. Okay, <laughs> that makes... Oh, I hope she knows we love her and that she comes back. Oh, I, she will. It's okay, Naz, I'll take the straight jacket. No, no problem. It's, we can share it. Okay, Bobby Miller, yeah, you got to clean and dust out the cobwebs in the pipes of those organs will sound off key. <laughs> right. All right, here's your first question for the night, people. Give me the worst name for a locksmith. Worst name for a locksmith. You know, today I was... Uh, you guys know we pick the top three from you, your, you know, the Live with Nash shows, and we put them on, um, on Instagram and sometimes on Facebook, just the top three, and ask people who normally don't watch the show to give us their comments and what they, they think it's funny, their own. So it's been interesting today. I was going through some of them, and you guys, I was laughing so hard. Some of those top 20s are funny. When you have to pick three, it's really hard. Normally, it's the top three, but sometimes when you put it on Instagram, you gotta, you gotta put stuff that, like, it's not inside jokes for us. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Give me the worst name. You guys are so fast and so funny. It's hilarious. All right, let's see. The worst name for a locksmith. Here you go. Open door locksmith. Okay. I don't mind being a milestone so long as it's not a kidney mile, <laughs> milestone. Yeah. Pick, pick, picky lock. Hey, Naz from Cat Crazy Wisconsin. Hello, Matthew. I hope you knew you had the number one from last night. The most embarrassing in the ER is run over by Amish buggy. Well, the number zero, we couldn't tell it. <laughs> no, not unlocked forever. <laughs> Cross-eyed. 
Ex-Con Picker. <laughs> Shut Forever. Ex-Con Locksmith. The Bobby Pen Express. <laughs> He's using a Bobby Pen. Oh, Locky. <laughs> Broken. <laughs> this is funny. Lock and nose picker. Ouch. <laughs> We break in for you. Mock locks. Good one, Troy. Mom is here. Hello, mother. Sticky finger jack. <laughs> okay. No picky, no opening. <laughs> no picky, no opening. Oh. Overcharged. Rusty locks are us. Let me loose lock shop. <laughs> Hello, Dolores. Did you really have a glass eye, Dolores? I just wanted to know. I was thinking about it yesterday and today. And by the way, speaking of yesterday, Michael Ramirez, the good-looking, handsome man, asked me if I have, if I ever have bodyguards that come to my, sh come with me to shows, you know. And I said yes, twenty percent, which is true. I want you to know, I never pay for the bodyguards it's provided by the client i will not be like some pastors who take bodyguards with them all the time maybe they need it maybe they don't maybe people say hey trust in the lord but i gotta defend some of those pastors you know if you're big enough and you're an evangelist and big and people here's some weird people that come at you there's some weird people i had nights where i felt scared really just being either followed or going to my hotel or leaving even the the parking lot. You know, so, you know, sometimes there's, if it's a huge crowd, there is, there is bodyguards. I'm on a contract with a client that whenever I do their events, they have bodyguards for me. From the airport, from this, wherever I go. But that doesn't mean I'm, uh, you know, do I pay for ones? No, I don't. I have someone on my team that is licensed to carry. And he acts like a bodyguard if needed. We never needed it. But he does his job. So with that said, no, I don't run around with bodyguards. And I don't have my own jet. I don't. And if I have the money, trust me, I will. I will have a jet if I have the money. And then people say, oh, are you crazy? You're one of those. Name it and claim it. I don't name it. I don't claim it. I never named it and I never claimed it. But what I'm saying is it makes life a lot easier to travel, especially if you're Middle Eastern. But anyway, that's just to clarify about the ministry. So some people think we're, you know, we're not just oh making millions of dollars and and have all these things. We don't. Okay, with that said, I would like you to hydrate and share. Congratulations, last night, no sharing, not one. All right, 80 people, please hydrate and share. Worst name for a locksmith, overcharged, rusty locks are us. Let me loose lock shop, clueless and keyless. <laughs> Good one, your local locksmith, clueless and keyless. All right. We specialize in chastity locks. Oh, no, Bobby. Hello, beautiful man. Michael Ramirez. Locked out. <laughs> That's good, Rochelle. Welcome. Uh, battering Ram Locksmith. Good evening, Beverly Wicks. How are you? Lock Ness. Hello. Hello, Beverly. Knob Remover Service. Wire Coat Hanger. <laughs> that is... Can you imagine you hire a professional locksmith and he comes in with a wire coat hanger? Oh, man. No locksmith. The Gear Scouts. Check it out. Lock it down. <laughs> Unlock your secrets. <laughs> All right, Troy. Easy open. A homeless are us. Unhinged locksmith. So am I. <laughs> Hello. Frank. What do you mean, so am I? 
Front door glass breaker. <laughs> Zip lock. That's funny, Becky. All right. Brick throw <laughs> breakthrough window locksmith. We saw nothing. You saw nothing. <laughs> locksmith and safe cracker are us. Oh, big ears can hear you. No, I don't. But I had a friend that did. And boy, did we have fun with her. Oh, man, that is funny. I don't know. Somehow a glass eye is funny. I don't know why. Open locks on emptied house. See what Dolores said? That was we had fun with her. See, this is the kind of people we are in this show. That kind of people that would laugh at stuff like that. Okay, that doesn't mean we're heartless. We care and we love. But when we see funny, we, repre we appreciate funny. <laughs> at the end of last night's show, I mentioned that I always had a bodyguard. It's called right guard. Yeah, I heard that. I do. I use right guard too. Uh, okay, no, Dolores does not have a glass eye, but ask her about the wooden leg. <laughs> when you have three sisters on the show, you know, somebody going to tell. <laughs> oh, no, she's from Louisiana. Is she, is she a pirate? <laughs> okay, with, if her friend has a glass eye, that means a pirate, of course. A pirate and someone with a wooden leg. Here we go. Where's Jack Sparrow when you need him? All righty. Okay, let's see. What do we got? Uh, let's see. Here we go. Tick, tock, crock, lock. Kaboom! Locksmith service. He breaks the door, huh? I know it's a serious question about your safety, Nance. It's just that you had someone on your podcast who mentioned he has a security company. It was a perfect setup. Oh, yeah. Well, his security company is those security, like, watches businesses and stories, you know, those security guards. Uh, bodyguards are different. Bodyguards company, which I have a friend who owns one, and the ones we use, we use them a lot, you know, with the clients that pay for it. They do, they do this. These people are different breed. They're different breed. Bodyguards are the type that would jump in front of you if someone's trying to shoot at you or attack you. They would give their life for you. It's amazing. Amazing. It just makes you respect these people. Now they're not very nice to you. They're not they're not very sweet people. But man, when you think like this guy is gonna throw himself in front of me. If something, I tell him, don't worry, nothing's going to happen to me. Maybe stock up on crosses to throw at them. <laughs> ah, like the pastor that took the free cross from me. Yep, I needed a bodyguard at that point. Combination forgotten. <laughs> That's a good name for a bad locksmith. Combination forgotten. The first sentence was big ears can open your safe. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Houdini Locks, that's a good name. Lock Ness, Ex-Cons Locksmith, and <laughs> Decluttering Service. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. They take your stuff. It's decluttering. Ah, Peeping Gawk Locksmith. I shared Ness. I usually do right at the beginning. Thank you so sweet of you, Sarah. Do you have a Harley for those great escapes? <laughs> no. Window breakers. My dad always told me never ride a helicopter or a b motorcycle. It scared me. I would love to ride a Harley. But it's just this fear inside of me. The UN's unbonded, unlicensed, and expensive. TNT locksmith. <laughs> Second copy we keep. <laughs> Hello, Pastor David McLaughlin from Texas. We missed you. It's been a while. That is so funny. Second copy we keep. Clean you out, locksmith. Oops, we locked ourselves in again. Close due to robbery. <laughs> Saw it off, locksmith. Shot through the window, locksmith. Never keyed up. 
and lucky locksmith we charge by the hour and can get most locks open if you're lucky <laughs> so unlucky <laughs> locksmith tumble stumble locksmith crowbars and bats locksmith we did bolt everything looking they locks sensitive listeners locksmith no we have a big hammer looking through locks <laughs> lock stock and see the barrel how come rita everything she's saying it looks like she's replying to bobby's old comment ba bobby guards this body we saw <laughs> We saw it off right at the point. <laughs> Lost keys and piano tuners. Sticky locks. <laughs> Keyless and seal. <laughs> Beat the clock, locksmith. Pick any lock, no proof of residency needed. <laughs> Unlock your heart. Aww. As the key turns, <laughs> as the key turns, that's funny. Bang up job, all access, <laughs> get it? A X I S. Insecurity locksmith. <laughs> Are you talking about the one in Ant Faye's closet that was left by the previous homeowner? It scared me for a long time. Oh, that is funny. So you bought the house from Ant Faye's, right? Dynamite dance. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Google, they already know everything about us, even when we left our keys. I know the bodyguards for my senior pa pastor. And who's your senior? Oh, yeah, I know who they are, too. <laughs> you want to hear a story, Bobby? <laughs> this is funny. I love Pastor Greg Glory, and he's justifiably need bodyguards for someone who does the Harvest Crusade. He does need bodyguards. But one time, long time ago, <laughs> long, long time ago, when he was teaching at um, Calvary Chapel, uh, Costa Mesa, Monday nights, Pastor Greg Glory was doing the Monday nights. He used to go a lot. So anyway, I went, you know, I was going in the green room and he was coming with his two bodyguards. And he goes, hey, Naz, uh, these are my bodyguards, and they have guns. I go, yeah, and I'm Middle Eastern, and I have a strap. <laughs> and that was funny. We both laughed hard at that. And I justifiably so. I saw him a few times after. I saw him where he there was no bodyguards with him. But uh, a man like that, yes. He needs that. There's, now, there's a lot of pastors don't need it. Trust me. But, Greg, yeah. When you do 50,000 people three times, three nights in a row, you need that. I know the bodyguards. Inmates for your locksmith union. The picky locksmith. Some of them are big teddy bears. You just got to get to know them. Yep. Graceful grenades locksmith. <laughs> Lock to be till Oktoberfest. <laughs> He's probably drunk by the time they come to you. We change your locks without you asking for it. Good luck getting inside when you get home. Clear the house and run, locksmith. Uh, congressional AOC locksmith. When the door is open, we'll take it all. Once the door is open, we'll take it all. Acid wash everything. Mock locksmith, repo, <laughs> steel toes and broad shoulders. Steel toes and broad shoulders. <laughs> They're going to kick the door in. Huh? No sissies misses here. <laughs> Broken key. <laughs> Stumble on the tumble. <laughs> Pop, drop, unlock it. Oops, wrong house. <laughs> the lock smithery. C4 are us. <laughs> Skeleton locksmith, we know all your secrets. 
As Siri locks man. Yes, story time with Nan. The wet bandits. <laughs> we keyed your car. <laughs> Tumblers of the mine. Sure. I would never need a bodyguard. My daddy used to tell me if someone kidnapped me, they would turn me loose. <laughs> You're the bomb, Nan. <laughs> Thank you, Art. Oh, bang up job locksmith. Lock lobster. <laughs> I can say a lobster doing your locksmith trying to put. That is so funny. <laughs> Home alone locksmith. To unlock or not unlock. That is a question locksmith. That's a long name on the, on the sign. Smashed locks are us. Three bears golden lock shop. That is so funny. Oh, you deserve a laugh. You deserve that, Debbie. That is so funny. You know, because Golden Lock was able to get. <laughs> because that was really good. You know, because Golden Lock was able to get into the Three Birds house. So, you know what? I'm going to call these people. They they know what they're doing. <laughs> if you can get into a bear's house and unlock it, they walk with him on and off stage. Oh, I know. I worked with him many times with Greg. Oh, second hand. Maybe you should leave this door locked. Last chance locks. Open says A, me for a... Fee, what? Open says A, me for a fee. But I would take her back to kidnap her. <laughs> Those are sisters, people. <laughs> that is funny. Kaboom, he missed the last number, locksmith. Edward Scissorhands, locksmith. Good. Three little pigs, locksmith. Replace it with Rubik. Pick us, <laughs> big bad wolf locksmith, the crack the <laughs> safe cracker. Okay, here's you go. Here you go, Pastor David. The pastor at a nearby church had an 85 year old woman who one day could barely carry her purse. Ivy, the church, a few weeks into noticing how much she was struggling. Asked if she was okay. She was packing her 44 Magnum in case someone came into the church to cause harm. The pastor decided it was time to introduce the safety team, four men in the sanctuary that were trained to, and positioned. And, and that she could leave her gun at home. <laughs> that is so funny. We pick your lock, not your nose. Even we can't open that disaster. Be careful walking into a grizzly or black bear's house. They're potentially dangerous since they have the right to bear arms. <laughs> good one. Keys are extra. <laughs> open sesame locksmith. That's good. That is funny. I see it on a weekly basis being a volunteer with the AV staff. Yep. See, I can always go into a church and tell you where all the security guards are sitting or standing. They're always sitting. You know where they... Blessing, everyone. Big Bang Locksmith. Hello, Martina. Welcome. Mm, the key to your locksmith. All right. We forgot to hydrate people talking about bodyguards. Hydrate and share, please. Why am I still on story time when it's Captain Hook, Locksmith, Three Card Monty Locksmith, Big Bang Locksmith, the talkative Locksmith because communication is key. <laughs> we hold the key to your future, Captain Hook. We break you by. <laughs> That's what had to happen. You break it. We break it, you buy it. La 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 la. Come on. Should we change the question? We should change the question. But first, full metal jacket. 
Okay, I'm gonna go to Guinness Book and then ask you for the Guinness for another question. Okay, Guinness Book for the record. Hmm. What is okay? Today is National Chicken and Waffle Day, people. National Chicken and Waffle Day. If you go to Nashville. You need to go and get chicken and waffle at the Loveless Cafe in Franklin. It's called Loveless Cafe. They put a fried chicken on top of your waffle for your breakfast. And you get a discount on your heart attack, open heart surgery, so which is, makes it you know feasible and worthwhile. So, anyway, <laughs> the largest waffle was created by Stitching, stitching, Gouda August in Netherlands, a new new marked Gouda, Netherlands. In June 2013, the waffle has a diameter of eight feet. Hmm, eight feet in diameter. How much did it weigh? Over a hundred pounds, under five hundred pounds. Over 100 pounds, under 500 pounds. How did I not know this? <laughs> That's funny. I know where to tinker. <laughs> Smith. Hi, Peter. You're welcome. Drink. Yes. Alcatraz tested <laughs> National Chicken and Waffle Day, people. It is. Peter. Did you hear about the elf shortage? Santa has to make all the toys and Christmas is delayed. Oh no, are they stuck on the boats in Long Beach and Los Angeles port? <laughs> Hello, Peter. Welcome. Sundials and locks. I handed Saudi. <laughs> One-handed Saudi locks. Man. That is so funny. You know why? <laughs> if he's one-handed, that means he's told before. And that's the punishment for stealing in Saudi Arabia. They cut your hand. You steal again. They cut the other hand. Then all you can steal is donuts and run. Full metal jacket. We break you by. Okay, let's see. Okay, how did you know this? Uh, Fort Knox approved. Two parole <laughs> locksmith service. Becky said... 222, 333, and 444. David, Pastor David, 145, 225, and 105. Uh, Tinker Bell's Locksmith. <laughs> Art, 499, 498, 497. Rita said 101, 301, and 444. Dave, 234, 345, 456. Jailbreakers, right. 175, 355, 467 for Laura Collins. Michael Ramirez said one mile. Becky Vault, 101, 224, 332. Dolores, 174, 318, 464. Debbie Malone, 340, 175, and 250. Rochelle, 179, 235, and 392. Sarah. Sarah is over 100, over 100 under 500, so... You need to remove one number from each. The lock and teeth breaker. 362, 489, and 391 for Bobby Ebert. Lily is here. Hi, Lily. We missed you, young lady. How are you? Welcome. The question is, the largest waffle, how much did it weigh? Over 100 pounds, under 500 pounds. It has an 8 feet diameter. So give me your best answer. Rooster and Ruby, of course. They really like this question. They're watching a movie with the volume turned all the way up instead. Oh, well, they get no waffle. Donuts. <laughs> yep. 125 for Bobby Miller, 225 for Bobby Miller, and 325. Frank, 150, 275, 350. Pastor David, broken tumblers, blacksmith. Martina, 175, 215, and 115. Alrighty, in other words, they're crying foul. <laughs> okay, Matthew, 111, 213, and 275. 
All right. Troy, 107, 399, and 454. Something like that. 159, 227, and 316 for Lily. Sorry, I misheard the range. I will try again. Over 100 pounds, under 500 pounds. And you get to win this beautiful, paid for by the sweat of my bra, not bra, bra, uh, money. Hot wire or more vlog, man. I missed something. Are we doing lotto numbers? No, Peter. This is where we do a contest nightly. A Guinness Book of World Record. We, need, we read a record from the Guinness Book. And if you have three guesses, Peter, and if you guess closest to the number that in the Guinness Book of World Record without looking it up or Googling it or searing it or whatever, you get to win this beautiful, charming, two-play toilet paper that I paid for so give us three guesses the the range the largest waffle the largest waffle how much did it weigh to make it to the guinness book of world record over 100 pounds under 500 pounds you have three guesses the hydrating and people sharing locksmith okay 122 235 347 for sarah dave eber i wonder how it compares to the stack of pancakes uncle buck made very close. Not so safe, locksmith. Break a mile down by feet. Safety deposit box, locksmith. <laughs> we missed you, Pastor David. And yes, the rooster and ruby, the red, don't like that question, which is why they're ignoring. Oh, the waffle. Well, we, we, we removed the chicken on top of it. Catherine. Catherine, over 100 pounds, under 500. You need to remove a number from each. D did someone say bra? <laughs> yeah, the sweat of my bra. Bra. I can't say the difference. Bra. <laughs> By the sweat of my bra. <laughs> Sold. Wait, Bobby. Let's give people a chance to. Acid hackers computer password breaker. Dold. Bobby said dold. It's always sad to finish number two in a TP contest. <laughs> Got it. Sold. My <laughs> jail cell lock pickers. Booby trap breakers. <laughs> click, click, boom. Locksmith. Eat more beef. Waffles. Okay. How much did it wait? Come on. Last chance. Come on, Peter. You have. Now don't try to say the word brow. You'll hurt yourself. Catherine, 234, 123, 345. All right, we're waiting for Peter Yu to give us his three guesses. Over 100 pounds, under 500. Easy come, easy go, locksmith. Locksmith for dummies, sold. All right, Lily, we're just waiting one more second for new people who are joining us. We have 83 people, and some of them want to play the game. So let us know. Going once. Going twice, and unlockable in and out locksmith sold. Okay, here you go. The largest waffle weighted 110 pounds, people. There were two people that I was concerned that they would win. I mean, I wanted, I mean, they were close. 105 by David McLaughlin, and then 115 by someone else. 115 but then mr matthew dirks from beautiful wisconsin came up with 111 and he gets to win uh this beautiful toilet paper and let's see who wore. troy came with 107 he was close but matthew came with 111 it's 110 therefore it's another battle Get Giuliani on the phone. No, no, no. There's no battle here. Yesterday was difficult. This beautiful toilet paper is going all the way to Wisconsin where Matthew Dirks get to enjoy it. All right, Matthew. Tricky Smith. Locksmith. Congratulations. Okay. Here's your next question for the night. Okay. Give me some... All right, people. Give me some excuses. 
kids give for being out of bed in the middle of the night? You know how kids in the middle of the night? All right. Rochelle, you have six kids. You probably hear heard them all. Give us your excuses. What excuses kids for getting out of bed in the middle of the night? And let's spin this. Wahoo, a baker's dozen. <laughs> Wuhan locksmith, you can never prove we opened the door. <coughs> Was that wheat with or without syrup and butter? Without, Debbie. That is a mission field. It's got sin in the name, Wisconsin. <laughs> Bosch locksmith, the musical. Bach. <laughs> Excuse this kid's gift for being. I had to go to the bathroom. Sure. Pandora's locksmith. We treasure no responsibility for what's behind the door. I missed you. Kids excused. Yeah. I I want a drink of water. The boogeyman is in the room. Right. I'm scared. Right. I need a glass of water. Right. I have to pee. <laughs> right. There's a monster under my bed. Yeah. Dinosaurs were jumping on the bed. <laughs> I lost, and that's okay. I'm okay with it. <laughs> I wanted to do more homework. Sure. <laughs> I have bed bugs in my bed. Oh, no. I thought I heard something. <laughs> There's something under the bed. Mr. Biden was sniffing my... <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Here you go, Dave. You did it. You earned it. You deserve it. <laughs> oh. Did you see that speaker just flew back like a like a swing and came back to me? Good. Okay, here we go. There's something under my bed. Mr. Biden was sniffing my hair. <laughs> There's a creature under my bed. Can I sleep with you, please? I wanted to put all the clean dishes for you, mommy. Sure. I see shadows. <laughs> the kid tells the parents, I knew all I knew all were scared of the dark, so I didn't want you to be by yourself. Yes. <laughs> Bathroom run. But I love you. <laughs> The monster under the bed coughed. <laughs> There's someone in my closet. Okay, the boogeyman's under my bed. I'm hungry. I needed to clean my room. <laughs> sure. Cell block locksmith. <laughs> we do our work from prison. <laughs> Good one, Art. I was thirsty, but I'm not tired. <laughs> A wooden leg jumped out of the closet. <laughs> Good one, Dolores. Ah, oh, I'm just waiting for Santa. I'm hungry. Mom, you said I could talk to you about anything. Did we hydrate and share at 9.15? No, we didn't. Let's do it now. Hydrate and share. All 82 people, if you're with us and you have water next to you, this is the time to hydrate and to share. Okay, I had a nightmare. I was being deported. <laughs> Troy, I used to have those nightmares until I got my doc. No, I've always been documented. Mom, you said I could talk to you about anything, right? <laughs> Isn't it morning yet? Sure. Ironically, that does not sound like Mrs. Harris laugh. The creepy laugh is fitting for that one. <laughs> Gare's cooties, yuck. I forgot to brush my teeth. Around the clock. I couldn't find you in my dream. Oh, I keep hearing weird noises coming from my sister's room. But I want to finish my chores. Right. 
Daddy, stop wrestling, mommy. Oh, no. <laughs> but you're afraid of the thunderstorms, and I needed to make sure you were okay. You know, this is a true story. My mother, she's here. She's probably still here. Mom is scared of thunderstorms. She gets so scared of them. So we always check on her when it when there's thunderstorms. I need you to tell me another bedtime story. <laughs> it's time to get up yet. Is it time to get up yet? The president got lost and popped up in my bed and asked me if I wanted a hug. <laughs> it's so cold in my bed. Can I sleep in yours? My invisible sister threw me out of the room. <laughs> but I'm not sleepy. Brittany, mother, amen. Hi, Brittany. Welcome. First time. Good to see you with us, Brittany. Welcome. The only question we ask. City and state, where you at right now? That's all we ask. Welcome to our show number 357. Every hour, we laughed a lot. And we, at 9.23, we pray for people. I need to find out if you're asleep. Sure. I need to get my hydration. But I don't want to go to school tomorrow. I need to hydrate and share. The dog needed a Bible study. <laughs> There's voices in my walls. Mom, where do babies come from? <laughs> oh yeah, that's a question in the middle of the night. David Ness told me I needed to hydrate and share. <laughs> Sleepwalking. I had a dream that both Andrew and Chris Como were in the room. Oh no, that's a nightmare right there. There's a wheelchair races at midnight. <laughs> I can't stop hiccuping. Don't like the waterbed. What are we sharing? You can share this show with your friends. Just click the share button. But right now the question is, Excuses kids give for being out of bed in the middle of the night. You can be funny. It doesn't have to be a real thing. Excuses kids give for being out of bed in the middle of the night. I don't have nightmares. My dog's ashes take care of me. Can we come in? <laughs> My room is too messy to sleep. The show to our... Oh, the show to our news feed. John Hancock Locksmith just signed right here. <laughs> Someone keep picking my bedroom door lock. <laughs> the full moon is calling me. Oh, <laughs> can I get another hug? Oh, you tucked me in, but the covers got untucked. Kim, Texas. Hello. Hello, Brittany from Texas. We also have Pastor David McLaughlin in Texas right now. So, but I need to rearrange the refrigerator. I'm waiting on 911. They are coming to get the Grinch from under my bed. Welcome. Can we turn on the news and watch the votes appear in Michigan? <laughs> but I need to learn how to vote. I needed to check and see if the refrigerator was running. I have to throw up. Oh, no. We had those nights with kids. I forgot to pray for Granny. Can we pray again? <laughs> the candy bowl was calling me downstairs. <laughs> I had a dream. I had a waterbed. Oops. Mommy and Dad. <laughs> oh, get it? He had a waterbed. Oops. Mommy and Daddy, I hydrated and shared with my bed. <laughs> I've actually met with you twice at Dallas International Street Church. Yes, Brittany, you're such a blessing. Thank you, Brittany. It's awesome. I miss that place. That's where they help homeless people there. And Dallas International Street Church. Wonderful, wonderful ministry. But the cat keeps running around. <laughs> But the cat keeps running around and keeping me awake. Lockheed and Locksmith Martin. <laughs> Good one. Can somebody come get the monsters out of my bed? Am I sleepwalking again? 
I forgot to do my homework. There's an, there's an actor hiding under my bed from paparazzi. Sure. Had a nightmare. Mr. Roger raised his voice. Oh, no. That's... <laughs> All right. Let's see. I hydrated his <laughs> shirt with my bed. <laughs> That's funny. But the point on the walls is too bright. and The paint on the walls is too bright. It's keeping me awake. I wanted to be one of the few viewers that watch the news on CNN. <laughs> Can I have a snack? I've got to beat this world record. <laughs> Big Bird was peck pecking me. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> Why is everybody from the Live with Ness group staring, staring at me while I'm in bed? I heard Daddy was eating a bowl of cereal and made me hungry. Sure. Shock, jock, and locksmith. <laughs> the towels won't fold themselves, mom. <laughs> oh, what a nice kid you have. I can't sleep. Hillary put a hit on me. <laughs> there are too many moths flying around in my closet. Can I sleep with you? Bad dream that the grouch took a bath. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to see if the light in the refrigerator turns off when you close the door. Big Bird gave me one. I've got to work on my stand-up routine. <laughs> my candy bar cost me 20% more, and I'm worried about inflation. <laughs> they do. I'm waiting for those ships. You know what? If you think about all these boat ships waiting to dock in Long Beach Port, Los Angeles, and they have all these products with them. They've been waiting, some of them, for weeks and weeks. I would say the ones with milk and, you know, that have expiration date, let them in first. Then the ones that have things that, you know, frozen foods and meats and perishable items. Then the ones that have money, they're bringing money to us, let them in. And then the rest of the stuff, you know, like cleaning supplies and soap and shampoo, yeah, because we don't want people to get dirty. But I don't know. I'm waiting for Simon Cowell. I don't want to miss the school bus, so I'm staying up all night. They said if I built it, they would come. The roaches and bed bugs have organized and excited me. Waiting for Johnny Carson to come on. Oh, no. I used to dream of the bad man with orange hair on TV, but now I just dream of some old guy who turns his back and walks away. Wait, was that uh, Conan? The bad man with orange hair. Oh, oh, that was Trump. But now I just dream of some old guy who turns on his back and walks away. For us East Coasters, I had to log on to watch Nez on Facebook. Snow White is eating an apple in my room. <laughs> I'm working on a science experiment, don't worry. If we're still here in the morning, you'll know it worked. I remembered you can save 15% with Geico. I need to get rid of all the dust bunnies around the house. I forgot to take my vitamins. I've got to catch up on my Rosetta Stone. <laughs> sure. Someone took my cross. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon. That's because the door is locked and you can't log in. Like treadmills. Can somebody tell the skeletons in my closet to go home? Let's see what time. Oh, it's 928. We need prayer, people. But someone has got to feed the raccoon. Okay, we need prayer requests. My phone light keeps turning on and off. Trying to catch the tooth fairy. I, I keep walking up, waking up with a giant needle chasing me. But mom, it's only... 2 p.m. in Israel right now. <laughs> Tooth Fairy is threatening to pull all my teeth. <laughs> I was going to surprise the family by cooking breakfast. Sure, I keep hearing the song, I love you, you love me, we're a happy family, and you can be, and out pops a big purple dinosaur named Barney. We used to have those nightmares. I was, Barney was scary. Alrighty, people, any prayer requests? Continue to pray for my uncle. He's still in the hospital with dementia and COVID. 
All right, let's see. Please keep my friend Maggie, Joe, and her son in prayer for complete healing. We will, Sarah. Part-time job, love life, and project. We'll be praying for that. More gigs for Naz. Yes, I need gigs for Christmas and for November. Where do Barneys come from? Barneys of New York. All right. Anybody needs a prayer request? Philip and Amy's family. Yes. Yeah, Amy, they had the funeral yesterday, I think. Unspoken for Sarah. Anybody else needs prayers? Just want to share something real quick with you. I was listening to Psalm 90 today. And you know, you listen to the Psalms and you read them and, and you forget that Psalm 90 was a prayer of Moses. It wasn't David, it was Moses. A prayer of Moses. Remember Moses? Moses, the guy that took people out of Egypt, faced Pharaoh, 40 years hearing complaints from people, went up on the mountain, talked to the Lord, argued with the Lord, trying to negotiate with the Lord for the Israelites and all that. Psalm 90, 12, in his prayer, he said, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You know, last few years ago, I was having Christmas dinner with my family in Baltimore. And we're all sitting down and we're having dinner. I just, I started praying at the beginning of the meal. And then I said, let's just enjoy our time because next year, probably a couple people won't be with us. And they were gone before the year was over. We're not guaranteed any moment, any life, people. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. And the people that you live with and you deal with and you're with, you don't know if they're going to be there tomorrow. So I want to encourage you just to love on people. And remember, don't just waste your time. Don't just sit there and do nothing. Like, eh, I'll do this tomorrow. I'll do this after. Number your days. You know we only have limited days. So let's use the best of it. Let's, let's, what's the best thing we can do? Share the good news of Jesus with people. Like I told you yesterday, guys. Share the good news with people. If God healed you, let people know. If God opened your eyes to see the truth and the truth set you free, do that. If God just, uh, you know, provided for you financially and got you out of trouble, do that. If God got you off your, you know, whatever addiction you had, do that. Share that. Because we have to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. All right. Love you guys. Thank you so much for a great night. Hope to see you tomorrow night, God willing. Then Friday, I won't be here. I'll be performing in Menifee, California. And a few of clubs. You know, you guys heard of Brian Duncan? Brian Duncan used to be a, a famous Christian worship guy. He's going to open the show for us, for me on Friday. So if you enjoyed his music, he's going to be there. It's a free show. And there's a barbecue. Come on down. Menifee, California, or let your friends know. Going to pray for our son, Rochelle. Hang in. Oh, for your son. Hang in there and keep praying for him. Yes, we're praying for your 17-year-old. We're praying for him. Good night and God bless you, Nazareth and company. Thank you. Praying for Naz and myself. Brent, Audra, Bob, Smiley, and all the comedians to have the opportunity to spread the joy of Christ through the gift of laughter. Thank you. A friend whose family member was just taken off life support. Oh, Prayer for all the unspoken concerns in our hearts tonight. Amen. Value of time, but live not of fear. Amen. Praying for Nazi. Thank you, guys. Pray for our nation. Remy should be coming home soon. We're praying for that, Matthew. Thank you, guys. Prayer for our country. We're so divided and and played against each other. Pray for American church brings the light and joy of Christ to hurting people. Yes. Amen. For Sophia Law, she's a frontline worker and we haven't seen her here in quite a while. She's in Toledo, a nurse from Toledo. Garber family, husband lost his mother Sunday morning while I was preaching. Then they had to go back to the hospital to pull 
life support on wife's mother. Oh. Doctor's appointment with neuro specialist again tomorrow. We're praying for you. And my 17 year old still really struggling. Depression broke down car again. No hopes for his future. It's hard to watch him suffering. At the same time, he lashes out at his siblings because he's so miserable and that isn't okay. Sure feel helpless sometimes. We'll be praying for him, Rochelle. We will. God is able. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow night.